Okay, that was Anton Karras, third man, as you know. Hi, everybody. I'm Randy Credico. Randy Credico live on the fly here in the Big Apple. And uh, I'm going to get right into this. I was thinking about doing my Cuomo impression today because, you know, he's my nemesis and I ran against him in 2014. But we'll save that because we have um, our dear friend, uh, Craig Murray, who has uh, been interviewed by me at least 25 times. And you can get all of those interviews at randycredico.com. And um, the reason why we're focusing on Craig Murray is on Sunday, he began an eight month prison sentence. He was uh, convicted of contempt. A few months back uh, after that, uh, we had uh, Muhammad Almazi go through it for us. Uh, He's a a great uh, journalist and he's a contributor to uh, Jacobin, uh, the the, the Center, uh, the Canary and the Electronic Intifada. Uh, Thank you for coming back and giving us an update, uh, Muhammad. My pleasure. So uh, let's uh, recap um, why Craig is in jail right now. Can you just give us a, um, an overview, a short overview of what happened and why he's in jail? So briefly, Craig is in jail because of his coverage of the trial of uh, former Scottish First Minister Alex Salmond. Alex Salmond was charged on, I think, around 14 counts of sexual harassment and sex assault charges, although he was acquitted in the end on all the charges. And uh, Craig was among a number of people who was very critical of the prosecution. Um, There was a a lot of evidence that was leaking via uh, emails and text messages, which showed collaboration between uh, bureaucrats uh, high up in the Scottish National Party and certain senior civil servants that appeared to suggest uh, a conspiracy of sorts to secure the the conviction of of Alex Salmond, who was in a sort of public and private dispute with the current first minister, uh, Nicola Sturgeon. They're both members of the Scottish National Party. Alex Salmond was also a former head of the Scottish National Party, and there are a number of divisions, and one of which is the 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 speed at which uh, Nicola Sturgeon and others are pushing for independence. Alex Salmond and others uh, felt that they were dragging their feet. Now, uh, when Craig covered this via his rather well-known blog, uh, because he, he he's also covered, for example, Julian Assange's case as well in detail, and I used to see them there, here, there every day in the court because I was also covering it, um, he wrote articles and published articles about the nature of what was going on, Uh, and about the accusations. And it was alleged after Alex Salmon's trial was over and he was acquitted, the Lord Advocate alleged that uh, and filed a petition of contempt of court against Craig Murray, uh, alleging that Craig Murray had not directly identified the identities of some of the complainers, right, the alleged victims in the case, but had indirectly done Uh, and in doing so violated a court order which protected their identities. And this form of indirect identification is known as jigsaw identification on the basis that someone could piece together the identities of the protected witnesses like a jigsaw puzzle. Um, uh, The prosecution argued that as a a, a Y test should be applied uh, in terms of jigsaw identification because the law is not uh, absolutely clear on this matter. A Y test in the sense that somebody who has intimate knowledge of the, for example, the women whose identities are protected, if they, knowing them, are able to read one of Craig Murray's article and are able to piece together the identities of the witnesses, including by using information from other sources, uh, then that would be a violation of, of, of the prohibition. In the case of the defense, they argued it should be a more narrow test, that it would an average person, an everyday person in the country uh, who read one of his articles, be able to combine information to lead to the identification of of, of one of the witnesses, one or more. The the three senior judges who heard the, the case, who tried both finders of fact and law in contempt of court, found against Craig Murray. Um, found him guilty of violating uh, 
the court order through jigsaw identification, and they sided with the interpretation of the prosecution as to how the test should be applied. And he was sentenced to eight months. And let me just jump in here. He was sentenced to eight months. And um, I know he tweeted out uh, your article that you wrote that uh, I cannot commend this article highly enough. Anybody who wants to understand why and how I have been sentenced to prison should read this article by you. Right. So high praise. Uh, um, I, I did work on it. It did help that I did lots of background research on the case. So people can read that at the dissenter. Uh, they can look at Craig Murray's pr Twitter profile to get more details. But where we are now is that um, he's now, I think, on day three uh, uh, in prison in this prison in Edinburgh. He has was informed, so he didn't know how long he'd be spending in prison versus out of the eight month sentence. He was informed upon uh, uh, going inside that he'd have to send, he'd have to serve four months and 11 days, I believe. And this is was confirmed to me by the Craig Murray Justice Campaign. People should check them out on Twitter for updates. They also confirmed to me that because he, he's now considered a civil prisoner rather than a criminal prisoner, he'll be permitted uh, books, the right to wear his own clothes and uh, regular phone calls as opposed to a phone call once every uh, week or two weeks um, and more visits, potentially more visits. Um, of course, there are COVID rules permitting because there's all kinds of rules uh, relating to COVID. I was also informed that he has chosen to have a single cell on his own. Let me ask you this, what's really baffling here, he's the first person in 70 years to be sentenced to prison on a contempt charge, a contempt of court charge. Is that uh, right? In, in terms of media contempt, in terms of a member of the media being found of contempt and being sentenced to prison. First case in 70 years that they could find in Scotland and 50 years for the UK more broadly. So that means somebody more slightly more recently, perhaps in England or Wales, would have been sentenced. So uh, now you went uh, to uh, the prison in Edinburgh the day that he turned himself in uh, and you spoke to him. What did he say to you and how was uh, his spirits? No, no, no I, I didn't. Uh, I know other people who, who, who were there and who'd actually, I know somebody who commissioned the filming of uh, some footage with the, which they passed on to me and uh, passed on to you, um, which they said could be used freely without attribution. But I, I, I haven't spoken to him since, not when he was in Scotland. I spoke to him when the decision was out that the UK Supreme Court were refusing to hear the appeal. And we have yet to see the details of the appeal. Uh, I, were, I was told by others that he was in relatively high spirits. And certainly the fact that he, the conditions won't be as harsh as he feared they might be is an improvement. Um, in England, if he was sentenced to contempt of court, the judge would have said at the time, um, eight months, uh, four months of which are to be spent incarcerated. But in Scotland, it appears to be different. So he didn't find out until literally he was, he was being processed when they told him that the release date would be in December. So it's obviously a bit of a different situation. So there's a bit of relief there rather than, you know, it could have been six or seven months. I see. Um, but there is an appeal that will be filed uh, under a process of, called nobile officium, whereby two highly senior judges will review the, uh, the appeal. Um, one of them will be a judge who is already on the panel that convicted him. So that's a bit weird. And who is married to the current, the new Lord Advocate. And the Lord Advocate in Scotland is a chief prosecutor, but they're also, uh, in a bit of a conflict of interest situation, sort of like an attorney general, like you have in the United States. So they provide both legal advice to the executive branch of government, as well as being the chief prosecutor. Um, and uh, th that's something that's been criticized because they're the ones, that's the department that brought the prosecution against the petition of contempt of court against Craig Murray in the first place. I see. Um, we're talking with Mohammed El Maz. We just have a few minutes left before we get to the next guest, Ray McGovern. Um, this sends a chill, I would think, to uh, independent journalists. Uh, what has been the response from people that you know who are independent journalists like yourself? 
I know that there's a, a lot of concern. So while Craig, uh, uh, while it's expected that this court, the Nobel of Fikiam process won't lead anywhere, they will appeal to the European Court of Human Rights. But, but by the time that gets decided either way, he'll have long have served his sentence. And there is a lot of concern about um, how this will affect reporting on cases. Um, so other journalists who were mainstream journalists who arguably published far more information that could have been considered jigsaw identification uh, were not prosecuted or charged uh, with contempt of court. So it's also curious, you know, uh, upon what basis this decision is made. It makes it far more difficult for people to seek to elucidate the details of especially controversial trials to the uh, wider public if you're concerned that uh, you might get hit with what is not exactly the most precise of rules. I mean, it's not exactly clear how jigsaw identification rules should be applied. They're also concerned that um, Craig Murray was targeted for his political position, both his crit criticism of the prosecution of Alex Salmon, but more widely his own whistleblowing uh, back when he was ambassador to Uzbekistan, as well as his support for whistleblowers and publishers like uh, Chelsea Manning, Edward Snowden, and uh, Julian Assange. Well, well, thank you for the update. Uh, in 30 seconds, how do people uh, access uh, your, um, you know, your articles? Uh, they can find me uh, via Twitter at M Elmazi. That's M for Mohammed and then E-L-M-A-A-Z-I. And I'll tweet out my articles and you can see the various places that I publish out there. Hey, thank you very much for joining us and giving us an update. We'll be uh, back to you as this moves on. Uh, Mohammed El Masi, uh, thank you, as I said. And we'll be right back uh, with Ray McGovern in just a few moments. Thank you. Credico. This is Live on the Fly, and joining us right now is a, uh, a former uh, senior CIA analyst uh, from 63 all the way uh, through Bush 1, and uh, he retired, and uh, he uh, founded the Sam Adams Association for Integrity and Intelligence. Boy, that's a long acronym. That's Ray McGovern, who I last saw at the Sam Adams Award Show last year with Jeff Sterling uh, receiving the award. Uh, thank you, Ray, for joining us. Um, you're the one who brought Craig Murray to me way back in 2016 when he uh, received the award. Was it 2016? Oh, no, he gave it to John Kirioku. That's right. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess you're shocked by uh, him actually going to jail. What did you think? Uh, when he entered that prison in Edinburgh? Well, we have to know first off that Craig Murray is a man of principle. And there are lots of men of principle and women as well who would prefer jail than to prostitute themselves before the establishment. And that's Craig to a T. He often talked about Julian Assange as being one of the, one of the smartest and ethics-filled person that Craig had ever met. And I agree with that, but that pertains to Craig as well. Uh, Craig was our fourth Sam Adams awardee uh, way back in 2005, after he got, uh, he got relieved of duty as ambassador to Uzbekistan. And uh, in his uh, acceptance remarks, he said, you know, um, they were torturing people, they being the United States. They were giving the proceeds of this torture to the intelligence agencies of the allies. And the, the Brits were circulating around information gained from torture. And Craig very poignantly said, you know, 
I, I wouldn't want anyone tortured to give me an extra measure feeling of security, you know? What he described, what he described was his mission of going around and going to the courts and seeing how the courts were using this information to pe put people in jail or to kill them. Now, it got around in, in uh, Uzbekistan that this weird English ambassador was doing this. And before he knew it, somebody threw up photos over the transom into his office. And what were in those photos? The pictures of a young man boiled in oil, boiled in oil, okay? How did that come about? His mother was upstairs when they came, they took care of his son and they put him on the kitchen table. They went upstairs and said, don't you come downstairs, we'll take him away in the morning. She went down and took some photos, okay? Now, it was hard for even Ambassador Murray to believe that this is what happened. So he sent them to the Scottish, uh, head of the Scottish Medical Service, said, what happened to this person? Answer came back, he was boiled in oil, right? That's the kind of thing that Ambassador Murray protested, but his friends in the Foreign Service said, well, we're not doing it. Uh, it's our American colleagues that are doing it. And so it's all right, relax. Hey, Ambassador Murray, and he said, I'm not going to relax. I'm going to call, call, the, call the end to it. Well, that was the end of uh, Ambassador Murray's very promising career. He was one of the youngest ambassadors in the British Foreign Service. And that's the kind of person he is. Uh, he was willing to sacrifice everything to stop people from being tortured. I mean, hello, we didn't use to torture people. Right. Well, here he, uh, he gets sacked and he gets uh, smeared by uh, Jack Straw and Tony Blair. They put out a bunch of crap on him. It turned out to be uh, false. Uh, no surprise. Uh, and then he decided to reinvent himself and become basically a historian uh, and a journalist. And that's how I know him through his journalism, although the, the Scottish court wouldn't recognize him as a journalist. But I think he's one of the finest journal journalists around. It's incredible. The way he covered the Julian Assange trial, so to speak, the, the hearing at which Julian was marginalized inside a box, for God's sake. And the way he covered that, it was almost as if it was a transcript that was given to him. And I know the extreme circumstances under which he, he worked. Uh, and we have a, a treasure trove now of exactly what happened in that, in that poor excuse for a court. Right. The rejection of... Uh, 800 years of Magna Carta type liberties that other British. I, I, Ray, I, can I just uh, chime in? I was there with him uh, during the first half of that charade, that show trial. And uh, I was astonished. He'd watch it. We were up in the gallery. He'd go out, have something to eat. And by the following morning, he'd have a 5,000 word dispatch out there. So he works fast. And then he'd get up at you know, at the same time when he finished, uh, he'd show up in the queue to go back into the gallery and do it all over again. And he did it again uh, for like a month uh, when it was at the Old Bailey. Do you think that's one of the motivating factors uh, that, uh, that they basically went after him here? Because he's the first guy in 70 years to be in prison on contempt of court by a journalist. Of course it is, you know, and to do this magnificent feat, I wager that uh, Ambassador Murray, our mutual friend Craig, uh, did a lot of uh, abnegation from his favorite whiskey. In other words, he could not possibly have written all that stuff and committed it to memory if he had uh, uh, had his normal one or two uh, shots of, of what we call scotch and what he calls whiskey. But yeah, it was, a, it was an incredible feat. And, uh, you know, it wasn't just this coverage of Julian Assange. It was his defense of Julian Assange. It was his knowledge that it wasn't a Russian hack. It was his knowledge of what, how that DNC email trove got to WikiLeaks that for some strange reason, although Craig offered, Bob Mueller, the investigator supremo, never interviewed Craig Murray. It was also his, his denouncing of that Skripal case showing how ridiculous it is. 
And, you know, he's the only journalist that was putting, putting uh, the truth out. And so he had to be suppressed, the more so since he was very popular in Scotland. And the last thing we need is uh, a bunch of Scots declaring independence like my friends in Ireland have done. So, yeah, there were a whole bunch of things that they had, a bunch of grievances uh, imagined uh, and real that they did this to him. Well, you know, he uh, has also been very critical of uh, uh, UK foreign policy, uh, particularly in Palestine and, uh, and other parts of the world, uh, financing uh, or giving arms to the Saudi government to uh, rain hell on, uh, on Yemen uh, and just about any other major uh, foreign policy. Uh, debacle that the Brits have been involved in. I think it's all of that because he does it with such clarity and he does it so often. Yeah, and he's got quite a quite a le readership now. Um, I'm reminded of an article that he wrote for The Guardian, uh, which The Guardian never really, uh, really took. He says, uh, among British diplomats, the belief that their profession exempts them, exempts them from the normal constraints of decent behavior mounts, amounts to a cult of Machiavellianism, a pride in their own amorality. Amorality. You know, it's really nice to have an ambassador, British ambassador, who is moral, who cares about torture. And of course, that doesn't fit in with the foreign office. And so Craig ends up in jail. It's, it's very clear what happened. They're out to get him and anybody else who supports Julian Assange. And of course, the British are acting typically like little puppets, like poodles, like sycophants, like vassals. Right. Well, um, so uh, does this send a chill to uh, independent media? I just asked uh, Mohammed that. Uh, your thoughts? Of course it does. Yeah. That's the whole idea of the thing. <clears throat> you don't say these things. Uh, you don't say them and become popular and then countervail the official line. So Mohammed is quite right. Uh, I'm old enough not to be afraid. Uh, and, uh, you know, there are a lot of people whose careers depend on telling the truth. And those people are fewer and fewer and fewer be in between. So what we have to do is, is uh, use occasions such as you present, Randy, to get the truth out there for those full souls who can still handle the truth. And that's the big problem with the Trump uh, derangement syndrome among liberals. It's really hard for them to handle the truth. Well, it was Trump that uh, started the uh, prosecution of Julian Assange, let's not forget that, and of Daniel Hale. Uh, so, uh, you know, I criticize all administrations and I have president uh, dysfunction syndrome, whatever it's called. Um, at any rate, uh, you got 30 seconds here. Can uh, any last words on uh, this uh, Craig Murray uh, quagmire? Well, I think the key question here for the rest of us is what this does to free speech. Um, now, we used to have a fourth estate with Edmund Burke uh, clamoring in, in, in Parliament saying, look, these three estates in Parliament, they're important, but far more important still is the fourth estate, and that's you gentlemen up there in the balcony, because you hold us accountable. Without you, we have no democracy. That was the fourth estate. It's gone. And what Julian did was set up a fifth estate, and the fifth estate has now been compromised. Well, thank you very much for uh, bringing up Edmund Burke, uh, and I'm not going to try to follow that quote. Uh, we've been talking to Ray McGovern, our Randy Critical, Randy Critical Live on the Fly, and here's a little Johnny Rivers to take us out. Secret Agent Man. <laughs> Everyone he meets, he stays a stranger. With every move he makes, another chance he takes. Odds are he won't live to see tomorrow. Secret agent man, secret agent man. They've given you a number and 